from our current news ecosystem, you may have already gotten 10 or 20 different updates, newsletters, news flashes, and headlines streaming across your, your news, uh, news di diet today. And I want to take a step back from that for a moment and take a context check and take a look back in history for a minute toward a time when I was growing up and the news ecosystem looked much different from the way it looks today. I'm thinking now of the period around 1990 and you can evoke in your mind whatever that period of time brings, brings, uh, uh, brings to your vision and what that period was like. And I want to focus for a moment on what it was like for any city that you might imagine in, in the United States or, or even elsewhere in the world. And in general, I'm going to generalize here, in many cases there were about 10 major outlets for news on average for many such cities. There were two or so newspapers, two or so major magazines serving that city, maybe three primary TV stations, local TV stations, and maybe three local radio news stations that provided news on a regular basis in some way. And that was generally the picture of the local news ecosystem. There were also hyper-local uh, newspapers, for example, in some cases, and some other kinds of news products around the fringes. But basically, those were the 10 core news entities in a given locality. We've moved from that world to a world where in any given city, whether it's New York City, or whether it's Omaha, or whether it's Los Angeles, or virtually anywhere else, again, in the US or in many other uh, countries around the world, to having a hundred local news outlets uh, accessible to us and thousands, even hundreds of thousands, of national and international news sources available to us at a moment's notice. And that proliferation, that explosion of news access and news sources means that the news environment is much different than it's ever been before. And that's some of what we're going to explore in, uh, in the coming sessions. So when we think about newspaper employment, on the other hand, even as the number of news outlets has exploded, the number of professionals working in newspapers, and this parallels the number of professionals working in the other news arenas, has fallen dramatically. So you can see here the statistic uh, from 1990, a, a workforce of 458,000 in the newspaper industry, and this is a stat from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, down to 183,000 by 2016. So this was a drop, a decline of 60% in the number of people working in newspapers. That's a dramatic and significant fall off of essentially off a of precipice. Now if we look at digital publishing on the other hand, we move from 30,000 in 1990 to 198,000, an increase of 560%. So they're moving in opposite directions, really. And that's what we've seen happen, is we've moved from a print newspaper-dominated world and a traditional media-dominated world to a world dominated by new types of information sources, um, largely digital. And the kinds of organizations that I referenced earlier, from Vox and Vice and Mike to ProPublica and BuzzFeed and Politico and so many others along those lines in the digital realm. And the result of that, or the, the, the result of that has been really this proliferation. The causes or the impacts that have led to this uh, proliferation of sources really are threefold. And they basically are the technologies that have formed the core of our digital news diets today. The first of these is the internet. So in 1990, we really didn't access the internet. There might be a few people playing out there on digital bulletin boards, CompuServe was emerging, AOL was starting to emerge, but really the internet hadn't been, uh, been birthed in the way we know it now in 1990. So the growth of the internet was huge. Social media, more recently, has been a huge uh, revolutionary force for media. And finally, mobile and related hardware has been a, a, another revolutionary force. And just want to say a few words about each of these. In terms of the internet itself, not only, do, not only did it make possible the gathering of information almost instantaneously from virtually anywhere in the world, it also allowed for the distribution of information almost instantaneously to anywhere, anyone in the world, those with internet access, of course. 
It also had a secondary effect on the business model, and that's a crucial, crucial point that I want to make here, which is that it's not just about the products and services that the internet enabled. It's also that the internet essentially fractured the existing business model for newspapers as well as other media forms. And basically, advertisers who formed the bulk of the support for the news industry could now find many, many new outlets for reaching consumers through the internet. And that changed dramatically the nature of the newspaper business model and the news business model more broadly. Social media, on the other hand, had the impact of bringing to life new powerful entities that basically now dominate our news infrastructure. And I'm speaking about organizations like Facebook, Twitter, Apple, Google, and other organizations even like Snapchat, which now serve as primary distribution points for the news ecosystem. And that was made possible by the rise of social networking and social platforms. Finally, mobile has transformed the way we communicate with each other, but it's also transformed the way we access news and digest news and consume news as well as produce news. So in the case of um, news consumption, it means primarily that we access news a lot more frequently, many times a day. Most people on average who, are, who consider themselves active news consumers now consume news at, on at least 10 distinct occasions throughout the day, largely through their mobile devices. And it also changes the way we consume news. We consume news more in bite-sized pieces in many cases, short news consumption blocks of five minutes or 10 minutes, rather than sitting down with a newspaper or watching a 30-minute or one-hour TV news broadcast. So these three core technologies have revolutionized the way our media e ecosystem works and have had numerous effects on the media ecosystem and on entrepreneurial journalism as a result of that.